bag of cylinder and a box of hammers. Yeah, you took off on me this morning, didn't you? Millie. Can't pet one head without petting the other. They get super jealous. Nelly Moo. Nelly Two. And some good girls. Okay, you can go back to what you was doing. I gotta mow the grass. I gotta mow ground fur. Yeah, ground fur. That's what you guys call it. But I'm out of gas. Moo. Well, I'm sitting here contemplating mowing the grass, but I don't have enough gas in the gas cans. So, for some reason, I don't think I can go anywhere past noon. I have no clue. I've just gotten into the habit of getting my chores done, my, my running the town, my errands, whatever you want to call them. Been in such a habit of doing that over the years in the mornings that it just doesn't dawn on me that, man, you can leave at any time you want. There's nobody stopping you. <laughs> I don't know. We're creatures of habit, I guess. But there's probably enough in the can to do the lawn. It takes about almost a full tank in the mower. Uh, the one side of my yard, I don't mow that every time. About every other time, I'll mow that. That is not fun to mow. You have to go real slow. It's on a hill. And there's rocks and sticks. I know where every one of them. When you mow the same yard for 10 years, you know where about everything is. But once in a while, a rock will show up that wasn't there before. And I figured it out. Because about three times in the summer, they come by to mow the ditch. There's no way I'm getting in that ditch and weed eating and cut. You can't get in there with a mower. In fact, the first pass I do with the mower, I'm like this, and it's it about scares the hell out of me like I'm going to fall off in the ditch. So I think when they get in there, if they dig too deep sometimes, or floodwaters bring in rocks, I don't know. But those will kick out a rock. Then here I am, tooling along, hit a rock. And every time you hit a rock, it's like an automatic cuss word. Comes out, yeah. Automatically, the minute you hit it, bah, bah. yep, every single time, and then the mower's fine, but usually them blades, living in Arkansas, man, you're going to hit rocks, I don't care how good your lawn is, you're going to hit rocks, you're going to hit something, and you got to replace the blades every year, uh, they're beyond even sharpening, so about every April or so, I'll go down and pick up some new blades. Now the place where we where we got all our lawnmower parts closed up. They didn't close, but that that part it was a furniture store, and they sold mowers. And in the back corner of the store, they had all the parts. It was two older guys, and they retired, so they transferred all the lawnmower stuff to the Ace Hardware, True Value Hardware, whatever it is. And I don't think they do any repairs or anything over there. So, going to have to do my... I always did my own repairs anyway. I mean, if you've, you've had enough junk lawnmowers in your day, you, you can take them apart and put them back together again blindfolded. I've had to swap rear ends out of them, engines. I mean, there's not much to any of them motors. Uh, it's just I before I bought this last one, I was just buying the, you know, the cheap used ones. And every, every time I got to go to mow, I got to fix something. And you get tired of that. I think I bought that in 2018. I guess going on six years now. Haven't had a bit of trouble out of it. But I take care of it. You know, I make sure it's not in the rain. I put it, I, had, I used to store it in the shed. But now that I have the carport, I put it under there. You know, and them things can sit out in the rain, and it won't hurt them, you know, as long as the, the motor's covered. Even I've seen people, they didn't even, they didn't even cover their motor, and they'll start right up. So they're, they're kind of built to be out in the elements, but 
it's still hard on them. Rust uh, doesn't discriminate against any piece of a machinery. So I guess I'm going to probably here in a little bit run to town, pick up some, fill up a gas can. I'm going to pick up some more diesel so I can set these stumps back on fire. A lot of the stumps got burnt down pretty good. Uh, the one closest to the cabin and the one out there, the cedar. That burned up really well. So I'm going to get a little more diesel, get them going again. But it's like every time I get them going and they're they're just going to smolder and smolder and smolder, we get a downpour of rain and puts them out. So all right, if I can get two or three days of burning off of them, they'll be pretty much gone. But I've got a pretty good start on it. But I guess while I'm going to get the diesel or the gasoline for the mower, I'll pick up some more diesel. Yeah. That sucks too if you're using a card because I ain't figured out how to put the card in, get my gas, and in this, I don't know if you can even do it, and in the same transaction, put that pump up and get the diesel pump. I don't, I don't think you can do it because it's counting gallons. So I think you gotta end that transaction, put the card back in, or just run in and pay cash. I don't carry cash much. Uh, I, I might have 20 bucks I can do that with, but don't think anybody's going to be there right now because it's 630. Nope, they're closed. So, but I can go there after they're closed. Uh, I'll just put the card in twice. I mean, how hard is that? So it, it doesn't even really have to be mowed today if I don't want to, but I'm feeling kind of energetic. Maybe I can finish my kitchen. No. <laughs> Oh, I ain't gonna do that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on that. Nah, I'm just being, I'm being a smart aleck. Yeah. There are some things, but man, it's it's like 94 degrees out there right now. I was kind of waiting for the sun to go down. But it don't bother me. I'll get out there when it's 100 and mow. But you do notice this here. 10 minutes before dark. I have never ever understood this. I guess it's just the way it is here. Ten minutes right before dark in the summer, you'll hear them lawnmowers start cranking up. And then they mow till dark. You know they ain't finished. It takes me two hours to do mine. And then the next night, you'll hear them fire up again. They'll do it. Come on, man. The heat ain't that bad. Get out in it. Wear a hat. I got my lawnmowing hat on. We'll get out there and get in it. I know some people don't, and, and I shouldn't be out in the heat either because I've had a heat stroke and it bothers me. But for some reason, riding around on a mower and it's got, we've got one, I'm looking now, man, them trees are blowing. So we got a nice breeze going, so it should be fine. It's when it gets over 100 that makes it unbearable. But when them temperatures start coming, that grass quits growing. Yeah, you know, about July. You ain't got to mow but once a month after that. Once every couple of weeks. That part of it slows down. But this time of year, it's every week. And then maybe it goes to every two weeks. It slows down. Thank God. Well, that's about all I have. I wasn't even going to put a video up today. This morning, I passed out the milk bones to the dogs. Millie and Tilly got there. When it's hot, they go under that new building. Because it's got that moss and all there. And they can dig under there and get cool. And uh, so a few hours later, I'm looking for Tilly. She ain't nowhere to be found. And Millie was under there. I said, Millie. And I got on my cameras and I seen Millie or Tilly headed next door where that old trailer is. Then I didn't see her again after that. So I started walking around looking for her. You really can't go far back there because it's just too thick. And then Millie kind of led me back there. So I'm like, oh no, what? What happened to Tilly? And here she was, she shows up, and I look on the camera, she was under that trailer next door. So when it's when it's cold or hot out, they'll just find them a cool spot and they're not coming out for nothing. But she's fine. And she rarely goes anywhere. If she goes, that's as far as she goes. Millie hasn't left at all. I mean, they're staying around, so I'm glad I've got two dogs that don't wander off anymore, that stay on the property, 
and you know that's a good thing to have Tilly I don't think <laughs> if somebody came on this property I don't think Tilly's gonna do nothing but walk up and, and want to be petted but I have seen Millie will bark she barks at the mailman or the mail lady when she comes up she barks anybody that pulls in here but yeah she's afraid of people too that's part of her past but at least they bark and then I when I hear them barking you know and it, if I don't see them on camera I'll hear them barking then I'll look at the cameras I'll see who's out there but it's good to have dogs for that I can't imagine what it'd be like here without dogs because I've always had them and it's always noisy but I've noticed since Millie or Waldo and Lily yeah they hardly bark at all at anything anymore they just sleep they're getting old I mean Waldo's he is 13 now he would be 13 now because I found him in 2012 he was about 10 months old big giant head little skinny body he hadn't even grown into his head yet and that was um, in September of 2012 so he was born uh, probably December of 11 I would figure somewhere in there yeah December November so he's he's 13 Get, get, gaining on 13 but he's old enough that's pretty old for a beagle but he's healthy he's healthy he just can't hear a thing all right guys uh have a good memorial day weekend remember that's to honor the fallen not the current thanks for watching happy trails